What's going on guys, Packers this and the Wise guys. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you sub, make sure you hit the bell. Guys, real quickly, before I get into this video, sometimes people are really nosy. I'm just kidding, guys. But some people ask where the hell I am. I'm actually at our family business and we own an antique store slash thrift store. We've owned it for 60 years in the Kansas City area. And that answers your question. Really, really dope stuff. Sometimes you see cool backgrounds and all kind of stuff hanging and all kinds. It's, it's wild, but I'll definitely say it's a blessing to own a business like this. And it's staying in the family for 60 years, so that's really, really cool. Now we're here to talk about flunderies, whether that be the tech cars I wanted to talk about or some of the deck building stuff that I wanted to lead off with. I definitely feel it's a little bit to talk about, so let's talk about it. First of all, I wanted to talk about snow owls now, you guys, whatever the hell you want to call it. I definitely feel like it's something to look into. No, it's, it's not as good as Apex Avian, it's not as good as Mega Ryza, and it's not as good as Emperor Penguin, Impen, if you didn't know it was Emperor Penguin. I'm sure you got that already. But definitely, guys, it has a strong capability to protect barrier statue when you actually do have it on your side of the field. You actually have Ecclesia and other cards on your side of the field. It's definitely something to look into for the simple fact that in and of itself, it has piercing, and it also has a flip effect, a flip eclipse effect that definitely hurts your opponent as well that can help you to specifically devastate your opponent. It's just something to look at, guys. The next card I wanted to talk about is playing multiples of the wins card because I feel like so many people are playing one and they just play one just because they see everybody else playing one. Yes, it's searchable. Yes, you can grab it off Toucan and do all kind of stuff to do some gold sarkin stuff to get it back in your hand. But there's definitely an issue as far as being able to see the card all the time, every single time every single game and inside of a mirror match i'm telling you the mirror match is horrible if you don't actually open up this card because that's how you win the mirror match if you didn't know tributing off your opponent's mysterious map with that being said i definitely think there are some other power cards to talk about whether it be ghost reaper that i covered in a video a couple weeks ago make sure you go watch it i'll drop it in a link down below i definitely think ghost reaper inside of this deck is something that you should consider it definitely conflicts with dimension shifter a little bit but i also feel that if you do have a card like this you can pretty much wipe your opponent out. It's slowly kept catching on in the OCG, and I feel like in the TCG, we may jump straight out of the window playing the card for the simple fact that so many decks inside of this meta lean heavily, I'm gonna say it again, heavily on extra deck monsters, whether that be Mubay to Fafnir, whether that be DPE, whether that be Dragoon, whether that be Anaconda, whether that be Heavenly Spheres, not that you need to worry about Heavenly Spheres or Anaconda because they're attack position monsters, right? right but it's definitely something that you have to look into because if you can devastate your opponent from being able to to play their win condition which so many of these cards are these decks win condition it's definitely something that you got to look into because it can devastate your opponent where they can't even play it just is what it is the last couple of cards i wanted to talk about um summoning curse is a card that i've noticed for a little bit which basically takes a card or resource away from your opponent each and every time that they special summon. I don't know if it's going to be that phenomenal or that great, but it's definitely something that you should look into because you're not going to special summon at all. I think. Unless you already got the game in hand. I'm pretty sure. And even then you could get rid of the card in any way, shape, or form with the wins card anyway. So it's just something to think about, guys. Maybe you even mix some true Drake. I don't know, man. It, it depends on you and what you want to do for your deck. But I definitely feel like it's something that you have to look into as far as tech cards are concerned. The last one I want to talk about before we get into the second part of this video is Cyber Dragon Core. Now, why the hell am I talking about Cyber Dragon Core? Guys, there is something that you have to know about this deck. This deck's biggest weakness over everything is monsters that are unaffected or untouchable you have to have something to help you inside of that or with that and i definitely feel like whether that be kaijus whether that be having a card like cyber dragon core whatever it is you're going to lose out because you're going to have to special summon to deal with one of those monsters you can't dark ruler that card because it's unaffected you can't droplet that card because it's going to be unaffected you can maybe play like volcanic queen because it's actually a normal summon and you can like pray that you open mysterious map but it basically is what it is with that you guys knew about volcanic queen already but I, I just don't know guys i i don't know specifically and i don't even know if i'm even correct on volcanic queen but there's you get where i'm coming from you have to have some Something to answer those unaffected monsters and that's where I feel like 
opening up maybe a Cyber Dragon core or a Kaiju or something and then just dealing with the card and then praying that you opened up map or the trap card to be able to play on your opponent's turn, that may be your only option. There's definitely some other options that I'm probably missing. You let me know down in the comments. Let's get into the second part of this video. Let's go. And what can only be seen really as an intermission before we get into the second part of the video, I want to talk about these three cards really quickly, enemy controller, because you can chain them to the little birds and allow them to resolve elsewhere or switch a monster so it can't get over in pin. You have magical midbreaker to ensure that your little birds can actually be untargeted. And last but not least, book of eclipse for the simple fact of handling boards. Let's get into the second part of this video. Probably the star of this tech time is Harpy Dancer, which is the first card that I wanted to talk about. And it specifically says that you can target one wind monster you control and return it to the hand that you can normal summon one wind monster immediately after that. Sounds very familiar to Flunderies, doesn't it? We'll also talk about Kuji Kuji Ku, however the hell you say that. But for now, let's talk about Harpy's Dancer. The reason why I'm talking about it is obviously because of the Trap Featherstorm, but also because it literally fits directly into the deck. It's searchable with Rubina. It also has an ability to bounce back Eagle, Toucan, maybe even Mega Riser if it, the situation does call for it and it does come up. Now, where is it weak? Well, basically you have to open up three cards, which would make that specifically be either an Eagle or a Rabina away that way you can get to her in some kind of way as well as a feather storm in order for you to directly get everything that you want out of this card is it good yes is it situational absolutely is it something you may want to try out well that's up to you but i definitely think that harpy's dancer is something that you should at least give strong consideration to if you are playing flunderies for the simple fact that if it does actually land it can pretty much devastate your opponent to where they can't even play in and of itself, Featherstorm is a card by itself, and we'll get to that in a moment. The card I wanted to talk about next is Kuji Kuji Ku for the specific reason that if the meta calls for it and Droll becomes a power hand trap inside of this meta, I highly, highly, highly recommend this card because this can search Droll. Now, obviously, this card in and of itself can search Droll, and that's been known for a little while, but I definitely think it's something strong that you want to look at. I don't really like the Zodiac stuff. I keep seeing that in Japanese deck lists and OCG deck lists where I really am not feeling it like that. But that's also up to you if you feel like you want to try that out. You can slip a Zoo engine into Flunderies, but I just... A deck that doesn't special summon like that, doesn't even want you to touch your extra deck like that, I just don't feel it. Small World is relatively interesting simply because the card is undefined and until it's defined, until some, some jackass breaks it somewhere in some meta somewhere in a galaxy far, far away, or in a YCS that are coming up, or in the remote duel stuff, somebody is going to break Small World wide open and I definitely think Flunderies has a possibility for the simple fact that you need cards that can connect. I don't like the Manawato stuff that I keep seeing, so I don't recommend that either, but you guys already know about Jack in the Hand you guys know about where Arfed out and some of the unknown stuff that is slowly coming in fruition is that people are actually trying crazy, crazy 60 card decks out, 50 card decks out that involve the Shino birds. As far as Nadir Servant, I don't necessarily think this is a tech anymore. I feel like it's a variant or an option that you may want to choose. Now, what's going to happen is if you do want to play Nadir Servant and play some Dogmatica stuff to give yourself utility going second or to give yourself setup going first or to give yourself a punishment going first, you can additionally normal summon any card after Penguin and that's why people are trying the Dogmatica stuff out. No, you're not trying to special Dogmatica, although you can summon Dogmatica Ecclesia off of a Titanoclad sometimes, not all the time, but just in case you open up Punishment first, that is a way to specifically get Titanoclad in the graveyard the way you've always known it to be, and then add Dogmatica Ecclesia to your hand. You guys already know about Stormforth and Shifter. These are really, really popular cards. I don't particularly think Stormforth fits in this deck simply because Unknown Winds is so good, and Shifter is really, really popular, but I feel like Shifter and Nadir are gonna conflict, and that's gonna be up to you. Wing Requital, Tribute Burial, Cards from Beyond or some of the other cards that I wanted to talk about. Tribute Burial, you need setup. Obviously, with Precious Cards from Beyond, it also needs setup. And you just, they just get outclassed by power draw spells that we already have. And that's a lot of times a lot of people's issue 
in and of it of itself with Konami because sometimes they just keep making power cards that are so powerful you would never even think of playing cards like this to begin with and that's definitely a problem within this game you guys already know about the Dogmatica stuff as I said with Nadir and you guys have seen in old combo videos and let me know down in the comments if you need to see the video again because I'll just drop it down in the comments where I touched on some of the Earthbound Immortal combos that this deck can also present because well let's face it one of the Earthbound Immortals is a hand rip. Iori Rosco, however the hell you say his name, is a very, very interesting card as well because it is going to rip cards out of your opponent's hand. And with that being said, guys, there is plenty more that I could cover. However, there are 15 pages of Wing Beast and far, far more tech cards that you may want to check out for yourself. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. And I'm out. Take care, guys. Arrivederci, Pegasus. -a.